with bands like this, you can't really connect it in words, but there's just something really special about them that makes them really uh, have these incredible, I mean, you know, I'm the same way, like, people ask me, why do you love them? It's like, well, you know, they're unique, and it's melodic, and there's a cool story, and, you know, they're good guys, but you can't really pinpoint it, but it's just something you just feel. You see them, you hear it, you feel it, and, and you get into it. And I think that's the same way for anybody that's a fan of Coheed. <laughs> When I was younger, I grew up, you know, when I was a kid, I was, grew up around music. My first two records that I bought myself, Iron Maiden, Somewhere in Time, and the other one was probably like Overkill or something, you know, one of those kind of records with the insane covers. My stepbrother was the first one to say, well, don't you know that those people uh, all worship Satan? All those things that a little kid's mind can't really handle. And I kind of stayed away from music because I thought it was uh, the devil's brew. Hendrix is, is, uh, was a very huge influence on me. My father would listen to tapes in the car, and, and one of them happened to be a, a, a Sting album. And there was a cover of Little Wing on it, on the second side, and I was always drawn to the song. And then I, I remember he had Kiss, Kiss, Kiss the Sky. Kiss the Sky was a, the greatest hits compilation Hendrix put out, and I think he had put that in, and then I put two, to, two and two together. I was like, wait a second, this is that this is Sting. And obviously it was vice versa. By about probably 12, I, I went to try and take a couple of lessons in that whole mind frame where it was like, yeah, 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 scale schmales. I don't want to learn any of that shit. I just want to, I just want to learn, you know, this Zeppelin song. Really, it was just about like what I was going to love, what I was going to dislike and, and how I wanted to put that into my own style. The guitar that I had in my house was, was, a, was a nylon string classical guitar. You know, and that's the only guitar I have ever known. When I moved to, uh, to Nyack, I met uh, Pat Sayers. The two of us became friends, I think, simply because he was wearing a Def Leppard t-shirt and I was wearing a Guns N' Roses t-shirt. In fifth grade, I guess that's a pretty rare commodity. Maybe I had the idea that we just needed to start a rock band. I know that I was really eager to do it. And I thought, yeah, uh, I'll be in a band. Let me, let me, let me figure out what I'm going to do. It's like, okay, the drums have to be the easiest. You know, this has to be the easiest. Just pound away. I can do that. So when we started our band, it was just the two of us, and we actually flyered uh, the town looking for a guitar player. And we'd gotten a call from a, from a guy, and, and uh, he came to Pat's house. And, you know, he plugs his pedal in, and, which is, you know, this is a whole new universe to me. I'm like, oh, Pat, what is that thing, you know? Uh, it's Magic Box. And so, but he's just kind of throwing this stuff around. If I'm going to be in this band, we need to play Rush covers, okay? And I'm going to be the drummer, and I don't even know who Rush is, you know? It's just one of those bands that I didn't listen to, you know? So I'm like, okay, yeah, no problem. <laughs> we think it goes well, and, and he leaves, and, and uh, later that night, um, a friend of his calls, my friend Pat, um, and he tells, he tells him that, you know, you guys are nothing but a bunch of dreamers. Nothing's going to happen for you. And I got pissed. <laughs> So I went up to the closet, I grabbed that nylon string guitar, and I started playing. I mean, I remember that when I first picked it up, I, I, I wrote my first song, which was basically, uh, uh, it was like E-A-D-E-B. You know what I mean? It was, it was just ridiculous. Like, I think I wrote my first song, which I later found out was, I think was like a Metallica, like intro of some sort. I, I think I just kind of started pushing naturally into just writing. Started writing songs at about 12 years old and you know started actually playing with our friend Rory uh, who was actually had a drum set in his house so he became the default drummer. My father was a guitar player as was Claudio's so uh, we just always had instruments around. The first probably proper band where we played our first shows was a band called Dark Ecstasy. It was very sort of 
doom and gloom, silly, you know, devil lyrics and so on and so forth. You know, stuff that 14 year old kids really love. There's a lot of names I can't remember. Toxic Parents, Jumble Heads, Sexual Jellyfish, Soul Canyon, Knights of the Round Turntable. You know, Rory, and he was telling me, he's like, you know, I have a, I have a friend that, that wants to start a band. My, uh, my father played in local bands, so did Travis's father. And I think at that time, that's when I had to meet Travis. I just had to meet Travis. I really needed to meet Travis. Well, I mean, when my, when my friend Rory first introduced us, um, I believe he, was, he, he did not like, like me from the moment that he met me. I didn't really know what to think of Travis. Like, he was very different. I think that he felt as though I was one of those, totally the opposite of how I really am, but I think he thought I was one of those people that was just walking in thinking my shit don't stink, and I was, you know, just an insecure kid, just like ready to rock. And, you know, he had songs, and he brought them to the table, and we had a good time, and, and he actually had a bunch of pedals, which were, which was back to the, the whole, you know, the first guy, you know, trying out for the band. It's like, oh my God, there's the magic box again, you know, and there's a few of them, not just one. But eventually, like, you know, he figured out who I am and, and you know, we all, we just formed this bond. The level of seriousness that, that these band uh, interactions took at some point was really ridiculous. Analyzing everything <laughs> that you can within the music, you know, and, and just like, you know, wanting to, wanting to be the rockers. The next week somebody get kicked out. And, and let me tell you, when you got kicked out of one of our bands back then, you were literally getting fired, like, professionally. Like, I remember at one point, I, I received a phone call, and I believe that was at my grandmother's, and, uh, and it was from our singer at the time. And he called and he said, look, man, are you taking this seriously? Are you, are you gonna make it to practice? I mean, if, you, if you're not taking this seriously, which I can kind of I can kinda tell you not, because you're not at practice right now. Pra Travis probably brought up the one time, the one time I think it was like snowing or something, or he couldn't make it to band practice, and I think we had t told him, or it might, I think it was me, to like grease up your ass cheeks and slide your way down here. I like, it's, it's like some crazy shit. Like, what the hell is wrong with me? <laughs>